Hello, my name is Matthew Aho, and today we're going to talk about supported by Versa SD-WAN product topologies. In this video, we're going to talk about overlays and underlays, about the supported topologies, how can they be mixed, and where can we apply them. Let's begin. So what is overlay and what is underlay? As you probably know, all SD-WAN networks are based on the tunnels and the tunnels and what is happening inside of the tunnel is considered our overlay network. So from the perspective of two sites, they may think that they're communicating directly from directly connected interfaces, while in fact, on the underlay, the packet might traverse completely different path and it might be very sophisticated with a lot of routers uh, on the path. At the same time, overlay can be built over multiple underlays. You can have your underlay as internet, as MPLS, or maybe multiple different MPLS networks, LTE network, and so on. While the overlay is going to be one that might be uh, load balanced across multiple underlays. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the topologies for your overlay networks in the SD-WAN network. Let's begin with the first simple topology. Let's imagine that we have six branches and these six branches connect six different sites. Uh, I purposely highlighted the uh, subnet for each of them. So we have branch one with the address 172.16.10.0 slash 24 uh, and others with 20, 30, 40 and so on. In this case, if any of the devices from the branch four would like to communicate with the devices in the branch one, the communication and the overlay tunnel will be built directly between those devices. As well as if, for example, branch four would like to go to the branch two, uh, the tunnel will be built directly between branch four and branch two. And the same to the branch six. And the same will be happening from the perspective of branch five. So we have a full mesh connectivity in case of full mesh network. From the routing table, it will look like this. So from the branch four perspective, if we want to reach the network 172.16.10.0 slash 24, we will go to the branch one directly and build that tunnel directly to the branch one. And the same accordingly to the other branches. The same from the perspective of branch five. If we want to reach any other branch, we will go directly right away to that other branch. Full mesh topology is recommended to use in a small deployments, uh, for example, up to 50 sites. Now, let's go and see the second supported topology. Second supported topology is called Hub and Spoke 1, Spoke to Spoke via Hub. In this case, let's imagine that we have six branches. Uh, branch 2 is going to be our hub device, while all the rest of the branches will play the role of spokes. If branch 4 would like to communicate with the network that is behind branch 6, the traffic will go in the overlay tunnel from branch 4 to branch 2 first, and then it will go to the branch 6. Same time, if the branch 5 would like to communicate with branch 1, the traffic will also go through the branch to through our hub. This topology is recommended in case if you want to do something like central filtering or if your uh, topology consists of more than 100 devices in the same tenant. From the routing perspective, the routing table of the branch 4 and 5 will look like uh, the destination for any of the networks to any of the branches will point to the overlay tunnel to the branch 2. The same as from the branch 5, any network is going to be available through the branch 2 overlay tunnel only. And overlay tunnels to other spokes will not even be in the field. While from the branch 2 perspective, we can reach any of the networks directly uh, via the overlay tunnel directly connected to that branch. Next apology, hub and spoke to or spoke to hub only. In this case, once again, let's imagine that our branch two is our hub and all the rest are spokes. 
if the branch 4 would like to communicate with what is behind their branch 2, they can directly go to branch 2. If branch 4 would like to communicate with the network that is behind our hub, they will also be able to do this. But branch 4 will never be able to communicate with the network that behind branch 5. From the routing perspective of the branch 4, we will receive routes only from the branch 2 that is our hub will not even receive the routes that are behind branch 5 and other branches. While from the hub perspective, it will know how to reach any of the networks. This topology might be recommended for the guest VRF or, for example, for the services that require one-to-many communication but not the communication between the branches. Third topology, spoke-to-spoke -spoke direct. In this topology, once again, we will have branch 2 that will uh, act as the hub in our topology. And in case of spoke-to-spoke -spoke direct topology, we can define spoke groups. For example, in this topology, I will divide everything into two groups. Spoke group 1, which will consist of uh, branch 1, branch 4, and the hub device. And we'll also have a spoke group 2, which will consist of branch 3, branch 5, branch 6, and the hub device. What will happen in this case? If the branch 4 would like to communicate with branch 1, they will have a directly built overlay tunnel between each other because they are in the same spoke group. But if, for example, branch 4 would like to communicate with branch 5, the traffic will go first to the hub and then will go to the branch 5 because branch 4 and branch 5 are located in a different spoke groups. Therefore, they are not building uh, overlay tunnels to each other. And therefore, the traffic between different spoke groups will be going through the hub. At the same time, within spoke group number 2, if branch 5 would like to communicate with branch 6, the traffic will go directly and the direct overlay tunnel will be built between these two devices. Let's look how it will all look from the routing perspective. On the branch 2, which is our hub, we will have directly connected tunnels to any to every other branch because it is our hub in this topology. While from the branch 4 perspective, we will have routes that are within our uh, spoke group directly connecting to the other side, like for example, to the branch 1 network 172.16.10.0/24. We have a main route that is pointing to the branch 1, and to all other branches, we have the next hop as the branch 2. Please note that in the hub and spoke topology, spoke to spoke direct, we will also have a backup route within our spoke group that will be pointing to the hub device. This is purposely done in case if the devices are unable to establish overlay tunnels within their spoke group. Let's say that you have a firewall rule that prohibits communication between branch 1 and branch 2, or for example, branch 1 is connected to the IPv4 network only and branch uh, 4 connected to IPv6 network only, while hub is connected to both of them. So they will not be able to establish direct overlay tunnel between each other, but at the same time, both of them can establish tunnel to the hub and therefore traffic will be able to go through the backup route. The same is gonna be from the branch five perspective. So we have the direct routes uh, within our spoke group, but if we want to go to another spoke group, we'll always go through the branch number two. And we will also have a backup routes to the local uh, spoke group through the hub. And once again, those routes will be used only as the backup and only in case if the main route, the one that connects directly devices in the spoke group, is going to be unavailable. Okay, now let's see how we can mix those topologies together. Uh, let's imagine again that branch 2 is our hub. And in this case, we can assign, let's say, that branch 1, 4, 4, five and two are going to be in the spoke group number one where all the configuration and all the communication will go directly between the spokes 
branch 3 can be our spoke to hub only and branch 6 may be spoke to spoke via hub. In this case, communication between branch number 4 and branch number 1 will go directly. Communication between branch number 4 and branch number 6 will go through the hub because branch 6 is connected as spoke to spoke via hub and the communication between branch 3 will be available only from branch 3 to branch number 2 and not to anyone else. So you can mix and match topologies within one VRF however you want. So just decide that, for example, this device is going to be in this topology, this device will be in this topology, and that device in some other topology. So the solution is very flexible. Now, let's talk about another solution in our portfolio, which is called Spoke Hub Hub Spoke Topology. Uh, to explain the use case and how it can be used, let's imagine that we have multiple devices, like hundreds of the devices, and the company that you are trying to unify with those devices is widespread, geographically widespread. So let's say that we have two regions, one somewhere in North America and another one somewhere in Asia Pacific region. In this case, we may assign the hub devices that are, are going to be acting as hubs in each of the regions. So for the region number one, we'll have branch two as our hub device, and in region number two, we'll have branch three as our device. Within one region, we can create any topology we want. So it can be uh, spoke to spoke uh, direct, or maybe a spoke to spoke via hub, or maybe a spoke to hub only. So the traffic between branch 4 and branch 1 can go, for example, directly. But at the same time, if branch 4 would like to communicate with branch 5, the traffic will first go from the spoke to the hub. From the hub, it will go to the hub in another region, and then it will reach a branch number 5. So in this case, we are kind of mixing hub and spoke with multi-hub or multi-regional topologies. Uh, these can be used, once again, in a big deployments where you have geographically spread uh, aisles. Hub devices may have a better connectivity between them uh, than branches might have between each other. So in some cases, it will even add you the throughput and the connectivity speed between branches in different regions if the hubs have uh, better connectivity between each other. Lastly, where can we apply those topologies? As you probably know, Versa supports uh, multi-VRF topologies, and we support multiple VRFs. Each of the tenants that will reside on each of the branches can have up to 1,024 VRFs. And each of the VRFs within tenant can have a different topology. So, for example, let's say that we have VRF A and VRF B that belongs to a single customer, and branch 1 wants to communicate with branch 5. For VRF A, we may have something like a hub and spoke topology, and the traffic can go through the branch 2. While for the VRF B, we may have a full mesh connectivity, where the traffic will be going directly without the need to go through the central point as the hub. So it means that within one tenant, we can build multiple different topologies for each of the VRFs that belong to this tenant. As well as if you'll have multiple tenants residing on the same devices, you can also build different topologies for the VRFs belonging to that uh, another tenant or uh, second, third, and so on tenants within our topology. I hope this video was informative for you and go green and blue, go Versa.